Hello. Hello, Hello teacher. Hi, Alberto. How is it going? ¿Qué tal estamos? How is it going? Mm -hmm. um, I am nice. Excellent. Thank you, Lupita. Thank you so much. You know, I really appreciate that. Teacher's Day, and I'm here. <laughs> Bien, clase. Okay. Happy day, teacher. Thank you. You know, I don't know what happened. No sé qué pasó con mi luz. Okay. Thank you. Gracias. Just give me one second. Voy a poner mi luz porque veo que se me apagó. Just give me one second, please. Okay, I'm back right now. Let me see. We are about to start with this class. What time is it? Yeah, ya estamos listos. So, hi class. It's really nice to see you. Hi Ruth, Lupita, hello. How are you today? ¿Cómo estamos? How are you today? Hello, teacher. Hello, hello, Jorge. Good. Okay. Congratulations. Bye. Good, good, good. Thank you. The teacher days. Teacher's day, you know? Yes. Thank you so much. You know, I really love what I teacher. do. Thank you. I really love what I do. I love teaching, you know? I have told you that this is not my uh, main job. No es mi trabajo principal, pero aún así lo hago. I really love teaching, you know? And I really love my students as well. Thank you so much for being my students. You are great. Okay. So let's start right now. And let me ask you, what day is it today? Who can tell me the date? What day is it today? Today is Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday what? Wednesday. 22 um, June. June, okay. How do we express the date? ¿Cómo decimos la fecha en inglés? With ordinal numbers, ordinal numbers. Uh -huh. So Wednesday, June 22nd. Don't forget, 22nd, 22nd okay. yes. Today is the 22nd of June. And as you may know, in today's class, class number 15, we are going to take care of this topic, quantifiers. We are about to finish with section number five. And in section number five, we have been talking about family. Tell me about your family. And yesterday we were practicing by giving information about your family, you know? And some of you were missing. Some of you didn't present the information about your family, but we are going to have from 20 to 15 minutes before we finish the class so we can present the information about our family. Vamos a dejar unos 15 o 20 minutos antes de finalizar la clase para presentar. Los que no presentaron ayer, lo van a hacer ahora. You're going to do it today, ¿ok? Así se van preparando y cuando ya nos toque presentar, todos estamos listos, ¿ok? As you may see, ¿cuál es el tema de ahora? Si nos vamos a la platform, section number five, ¿qué temas nos hacen falta? We are just missing two topics, two topics to finish section number five. Let me show you, section number five, Okay, present continuous and quantifiers, quantifiers. Those are the main topics that we are missing to finish this section, section number five. 
But I guess we have been practicing about the simple present and also the present continuous. Hemos estado ya practicando bastante. El presente continuo para hablar de acciones, to talk about actions that are happening in this moment, right? In this moment. Just to make sure, and let me tell you, ya hablamos del presente continuo para expresar cosas que están pasando en este momento, ¿ok? ¿Estamos claros con eso? Is it clear to talk about activities that are going on just right in this moment? But you know, we can also use the present continuous to talk about activities that are happening in these days. Okay, not only right now, but we can talk about activities that are in progress, that we are doing today, that we are doing tomorrow, and that we are going to continue doing in the next days. For example, if I tell you, do you have plans with your family or do you have projects with your family that you are doing right now? Can you give me an example? What are your family's projects or plans for the coming days or for the next week or for these days? Do you have plans with your family or something that you are doing right now and that you will continue doing in these days? No? If not, I'm going to give you my example. For example, in my case, I have a project with my family and you know that we have been, we have been working on the garden, you know, because we have an open area that is like a garden that is in the backyard, but we have been working on the garden and we are working in these days. We are planning to finish in these days. Look, so as you can say, or as you may see, this is a project or an activity that we are doing today, that we did yesterday, and that we are going to do in the coming days. Activities that are happening in this moment. In other words, when we talk about projects, activities that we are doing, we can say that we are also using the present continuous, right? Cuando hablamos de proyectos, Cosas que hacemos no solo en un día, sino que necesitamos un par de días más. También a eso le llamamos el presente continuo. Why? Because we are repeating the action and we haven't finished yet. No hemos terminado con las acciones. Les voy a mostrar una lista de acciones o cosas. Como un ejemplo, projects that you can do with your family, y que utilizamos el present continuous to talk about these projects. Look, what can you see in the pictures? I have six different examples about the present continuous. Number one, what do you see in the first picture? First picture. What is the activity about or the project about? ¿De qué se trata ese proyecto? First picture, this one. Ruth, ¿de qué se trata ese proyecto? Mm. Yes, learning. Este es sobre lenguajes. Mm -hmm. Okay, learning a foreign language. What is the meaning of foreign? ¿Quién sabe? ¿Qué significa foreign? Aprender otro idioma. ¿Qué es foreign? Foreign. What is the meaning of this word in Spanish? Extranjero. Extranjero. Muy bien. So learning a foreign language. Are you learning a foreign language? 
Estarán aprendiendo ustedes un foreign language right now? Yes. Yes, yes you are, because yes. in El Salvador, we don't speak English in this case as a main language. This is like a second language or a foreign language. So is this a project or is this an activity that is happening only today, only in this moment, or are you going to continue learning a foreign language? En su caso, ¿será que solo ahora en este momento estamos aprendiendo un idioma extranjero? O van a continuar. Are you going to continue learning a foreign language? Today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Entonces, ¿cómo expresamos esta idea con el presente continuo? Hagamos una oración. Look, I am learning a foreign language. I am learning a foreign language. Y lo expresamos con el presente continuo, porque es una acción que vamos a seguir haciendo. Bien. Next one. Second example. Look at the second example. Gabriela, what is the second picture about? ¿De qué se trata la segunda imagen? Race, raising a child. Raising a child. Gabby, do you have a boy, right? A son. Yes. Okay, Gabriela has a son and some of you have kids. So is raising a child an activity that you are going to do only today or probably only this week? Yes or no? Oh, yes, the next week. So, uh -huh. okay. ¿Será que se, es una actividad que va a terminar la otra semana? Raising a kid. Is that activity going to finish this week or probably next week? No. No, right? It's going to take years for you to finish raising your kids. So if you see, this is an activity that we can express using the present continuous because it's going to take a while. Va a tomar un tiempo en crear a un niño. Entonces, ¿cómo sería la oración? Usando el presente continuo. How do you make the question? Well, not question. How do you make the statement to express this activity? ¿Cómo sería nuestra oración con el presente continuo? Any idea? Mm -hmm. Okay, Guy. I am a race. I am racing a child. I am racing a child. I am raising a child. Estoy criando. Si se fijan, es una actividad que va a continuar por años. Okay? It's going to take years. Number three. Jorge, what do you see in number three? What is that project or activity about? Renovating the house. Mm -hmm. And what are they doing in the picture? Specifically, what are these people doing in the picture? The people are paint, painting the, mm -hmm. the room. Okay, they are paint, yes. painting the room or the wall. Exactly. The wall. Renovating the house. How long does it take to renovate the house? How long does it take to renovate the house? ¿Cuánto toma en renovar Maybe una casa? Maybe one or uh, uh -huh. three, four. Or five days. How long does, depends. It depends, right? It depends on the renovation that you are doing. How long does it uh, space. take to renovate a house? It depends if you're fixing, you know, something in the house, it can take just one day. If you are uh, painting the walls, it can take one or two days. If you are, in this case, like me, trying to 
renovate the garden, it is going to take more than one week. So how do we express this activity using the present continuous? ¿Cómo expresamos con el presente continuo esta idea? Renovating the house. Make a sentence, please. Anyone. How do we make a sentence using renovating the house? Glenda, give it a try, please. Make a sentence or express the idea about renovating the house, please. ¿Cómo se diría? Mm -hmm. um, I am renovating the house. Ok, I am renovating the house. Agreguémosle algún comentario extra. Let's okay. add some other words to this idea. Um, I am... Or who wants to give it a try? ¿Quién quiere probar? I am renovating the house and add an extra comment to give the complete idea. Rita, do you want to try? I am renovating the house. Make an extra comment, please. Okay, can you repeat that again, please? They are the change, is the change the colors? You're changing the color uh -huh. from where? The paint and, ah, okay. and the... Mm -hmm. You're painting the in walls your... or you're changing the color of the wall? In the rooms, uh-huh. There we go, oh, in the rooms, very good job. There we go. So learning a foreign language, raising a child and renovating the house. Let me stop here. Ya vamos a continuar. Está claro cómo utilizamos entonces el presente continuo. No solo para hablar de lo que está pasando en este momento. I am listening to the teacher. I am eh, writing in my notebook. No. I am watching a movie, I am eating, acciones que pasan y terminan en este momento. Pueden ser también acciones que duran años. Ya vieron la idea de raising a child. Puede durar años y se expresa con el presente continuo. Right. Let's continue. Veamos. Yanira. Number four. Picture number four. Uh, What is this idea about? Uh, working in another country. Okay, working in another country. Can you make a sentence to express this idea? Uh, he is working in another country. Um, he is um, traveling for business. Okay, okay. Really nice idea, very good. Who is working in another country? Maybe do you have family? friends that are working in a different country who can give me yeah. an example of people who is working in another country not in El Salvador so you can give me or express your ideas he is traveling um, mm -hmm. yeah. traveling uh, Alguien de los que ustedes conocen estará trabajando working in another country or maybe a member of your family or a co-worker as well who is working in another uh, country. Nobody? Nadie de los que conocen trabaja en otro país. Mm -hmm. No? Not no. really? Okay. Yes, Carlos. Carlos is working here in Guatemala. Guatemala too. <laughs> I was expecting to listen to that. A él me refería, ¿no? Alguien de los que conoce ustedes, ¿no? Teacher. Of course, Carlos. Sometimes he's in El Salvador and sometimes he is working in another country. In this case, in Guatemala. Well, last time he was in Guatemala. 
So if you see, this is an action that he is doing constantly. Not only today, probably tomorrow he is going to be back in El Salvador or probably next week he is going to move to a different country. Present continuous. So that is clear. Writing a blog, writing a blog. Writing a blog. And the last one that we have is learning to drive. Learning to drive. Take a look at this smiley girl. She is learning to drive. So I really need to listen to your ideas. Ahora quiero sus ideas basado en los ejemplos. ¿Qué acciones hacemos que continúan en el tiempo o que no terminan inmediatamente? Give me your ideas, please. At least one. An example about activities that are going to continue during the days. Okay, let me listen to your ideas. I'm going to give you one minute so you can think about the ideas and then you can express about similar examples. Okay. Le doy un minuto para que piensen, just one minute. Okay. Okay, time is over. Let me listen to you, Jorge. Give me one example, please. About this speech or the other? Mm, a similar example about activities using the present continuous or that we can express using the present continuous. Go please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actividades que hacemos y que no terminan en el momento. Puede ser un proyecto. Okay, go please. I am playing basketball with my, my daughters in fin de semana. <laughs> Maybe. Weekend, weekend. En weekend, on weekend. Mm, ¿Qué piensan de esa actividad? ¿Será que es una actividad que termina el mismo día o que continúa? ¿Será que continúa jugando el lunes, el martes, miércoles, jueves? Quiero que lleguemos a esa idea. Termina. Actividades que no terminan en el momento. Because remember, la idea de ahorita es que ustedes identifiquen actividades. Mm -hmm. Ok, construction. Construction, this is going to take a while. Very good job. For example, if you have a loan, si tienen un crédito, un préstamo, será que termina en el momento, lo pagamos en el momento, or is it an activity that we are going to do si soy diputado, every month? Okay. Right, <laughs> but we are not, we are not, right? We are not. So this is an activity or a great example of activities that are going to be don't in the time, okay? We are going to express this using the present continuous. Teacher, y yes. podría ser, por ejemplo, I, for example, I am taking the child to a school every day. I am taking the child, yes, because you are going to take the child today, tomorrow, and the whole week, and the whole year. Se va a repetir la actividad cada día. So that's a great example. Algo que hacemos todos los días. Ir a trabajar. I am working at Dacosal in this moment. I am working at Dacosal in this moment. 
this is an activity that you are going to be doing every day, right? And next year and probably the coming year is an activity that you are going to be repeating. Si se fijan, sí, lo hacemos constantemente, es una acción que no termina. Puede durar años. In my case, I am working or I am teaching at Inglés Corporativo. Hopefully, I'm going to continue teaching now with Inglés Corporativo, right? If they want me to stay here, I'm going to stay teaching. This is an activity that I'm going to be repeating today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, right? So, ¿está clara la idea del presente continuo? Yes, no. No solo lo ocupamos para actividades que terminan en el momento, sino para actividades que se pueden extender. That's it. Questions or comments about this topic. Present continuous. Mm -hmm. If not, let's go and watch the video. So we can listen to the explanation. Here we go. The question word needed at the very beginning of it. Okay, here we Are go. Are you ready to study present continuous? I want you to play the audio program and follow us on the explanation. Before we begin, I want to remind you, present continuous is used for actions that are happening right now. With this in mind, let's listen. Present continuous. Are you living at home now? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Is your sister working for the government? Yes, she is. No, she's not. No, she isn't. Are Ed and Jill going to college this year? Yes, they are. No, they're not. No, they aren't. Where are you working now? I'm not working. I need a job. What is your brother doing these days? He's traveling in the Amazon. Who are your parents visiting this week? They're visiting my grandmother. Again, it is important for you to recall the difference between these two tenses. Remember the simple present is used for habitual actions and present continuous is for actions that are happening right now. This is how we ask yes no questions in present continuous. Be plus subject plus verb, ing plus complement plus question mark. Read the example with me. Is she eating? Yes, she is. No, she's not. And to ask WH questions, we add the question word needed at the very beginning of it. Let's work it out. What is she eating? She's eating pizza. Note and never forget that we need the verb be plus ing for affirmative, negative, or questions when using the present continuous. So what are you doing right now? Type your answers in a discussion block. Okay, let's go back to these examples. Look. All right. Activities that we are doing right now or in this moment. Look at the first example. Are you living at home now? Are you living at home now? Is this an activity that is going to stop right now or is going to continue in the time? Será una actividad que se va a detener ahorita? Are you living at home now? Yes or no? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Are you living at home now? No, right? This is an activity that is going to continue over the days. Is your sister working for the government? Yes, she is. No, she is not. In this case, this lady or this girl, she is going to continue working in the same place, not only today, but probably along the years. Look at number three. Is, well, are Ed and Jill going to college this year? Are they going to college this year? Not only today, not only tomorrow, but this year. 
Yes, they are. No, they are not. Something important that I want you to use whenever we are going to express activities that are not going to finish in this moment are this one. Now, these days, this week. Now, these days, and this week, right? Para expresar el presente continuo or activities que no van a terminar en este momento, seamos enfáticos. Preguntemos con estas expresiones. Now, these days, and this week. And as you may see, this is a short answer, but giving extra information. Where are you working now? I'm not working. I need a job. What is your brother doing these days? He's traveling in the Amazon. Who are your parents visiting this week? They are visiting my grandmother. Okay. Questions about the examples? Or is all clear? Sí, que, o sea, si le entiendo esa parte, pero ya en la, eh, eh, trabajando en la plataforma no puedo avanzar exactamente en esa parte. Bien. Vámonos a la plataforma. La idea es, como ya estamos en el pre-intermedio, pre-intermedio, no solo demos respuestas cortas, ¿ok? Sino que complementemos la idea. Please, let me see. What section is seat? ¿Qué ejercicio es? Find point mmm, 5.9, ¿será? Donde hay que completar la conversación, creo que es la siguiente. Let me check. Is it this one? This one. Because I only have this one and this one. Tengo esa también. This. Which one? This or this one? Because this is a reading exercise and in this case, this is about... En la siguiente, donde se divide en dos secciones. <coughs> because this is about the family. No, no, no. No, Entonces, and I only have this one. Is it section más number más adelante. Let me see. Next. No, but that's it. El, el siguiente, es el siguiente. Ah, es el donde se ocupa, donde se ocupa das. El siguiente. Y dos. De, después del después de listening. Entonces, es acá, este es el examen. Yo pensé que era Ajá. la parte de ejercicio. Final exam. Muy Ajá. bien. Don't sí, worry. Es que no, la primera parte no tuve problema. Hagámoslo. Yes, why not? We can do it. Sure. ¿Quieres copiar? Esa parte estaba bastante fácil. Yes. Part number two. Esa Is parte this? dos ya no, no pude avanzar. But if you see, vamos a utilizar el presente continuo Exacto. con los verbos. ¿Cuál es la fórmula para utilizarlo? We have the subject, verb to be, verb plus ing in complement. Siempre utilizamos el verbo to be, is, are, or am, luego el verbo con forma de ing, ing. How is your sister? Y como es una pregunta, la inicio con is. Is she... Starting these days? Is she starting these days? Recuerden la fórmula. Para hacer oraciones afirmativas, tengo subject, plus, verb to be, am, um, is, are, más el verbo con ing, with ing, y tengo el complemento. Pero para hacer una pregunta, 
qué cambio. Cambia el orden nada más. Inicio con el verbo to be. Am, is, or are. Luego le sigue el sujeto. Subject. Luego le sigue el verbo. With the ing form. And then the complement. Ok, ya tengo mis fórmulas. Sigo esta parte para hacer preguntas. Casi todas son preguntas. Look. ¿Con qué inicio? ¿Con? Am, is or are. Mira, inicié con am, is or are. Necesito un sujeto. En este caso, sister. Lo reemplazo por she. Y luego el verbo con ing. Ya me da el verbo acá, study, y le agrego solo ing, studying. Veamos la número dos. No, she isn't. She work as a cashier at a grocery store. ¿Será esta una oración afirmativa o pregunta que necesitamos hacer? Es afirmativa. Afirmativa porque no tengo al final un signo de interrogación. No hay nada que me indique que es negativa. Interrogativa. This is an affirmative. Sigamos la, en este caso, la fórmula. No, she isn't. She. ¿Qué me hace falta? Ya tengo el sujeto. Después del sujeto, que necesito? He's working. Verbo to be. Luego el verbo. Y le agrego ING. That's it. La número dos. ¿Qué necesito hacer? ¿Una pregunta, oración negativa o una afirmativa? Una pregunta. It's a question. ¿Cómo hago una pregunta? It's a question. Aquí está. ¿Cómo yo necesito hacer una pregunta? ¿Qué necesito primero? Un, en este caso, el verbo to be. Verbo Is to that be. David over there? Who wait for? Who, ¿a quién está who. esperando? Who? Who is waiting. Verbo to be, sujeto y el verbo con ing. Who is he waiting for? ¿A quién está esperando? Misma forma de hacerlo. La siguiente. Necesitamos una oración afirmativa. His girlfriend, Maggie. She come in on the bus. Sigamos la misma estructura. Ya tengo el sujeto. Le sigue el verbo to be. El verbo con ing. Y ya está ahí el complemento. Look. Me comí el verbo to be yo, por eso nunca avancé. Por el verbo to be. Ah, ok. Sí. Let me check. Vamos a ver cómo nos sale. And that's it. Dice que acá, ah, aquí no complementamos. Bueno, solo complementamos la parte 2 porque era la que les hacía falta. Pero esa es la forma de hacer una oración afirmativa y una pregunta. No olvidemos el verbo to be, porque si no, eh, no nos va a resultar. Siempre lleva el verbo to be. ¿Ok? Hoy sí estamos claros con esta parte. Is it clear? Yes, teacher. Yes, very good job. Teacher, yo tengo otra duda. Yes. Which one? In the last part, number five, say, uh, complete, complete conversation. Uh, the use does and would do does or good. Ah, ok, la primera parte. En the second part is my doubt yes. number This one. two. Number two. Ajá, mm -hmm. uh -huh. is David over there. David over there. Mm -hmm. Who? Ajá. Uh -huh. 
Uh, no sé. In my case, I write in T is waiting. Uh, I don't know. The reply is a mistake. Ah, okay. So you didn't have this answer. ¿Cómo la tenía uh -huh. usted, Rita? She is waiting. Oh, she. But mm -hmm. if you notice, si se fija, I... estamos hablando de David. So if... uh -huh. But the second part is very confused but because say who? Who waited for? Entonces, algo, ¿quién estaba esperando? Entonces pensé que iba por, como por ella. Mm -hmm. mm, ok, entiendo. Mm -hmm, pero sí. Entonces. Acá es, is that David? ¿Es ese David el que está por allá? ¿A quién está esperando? Ok. No nos pasemos a la siguiente idea hasta que complementemos esta. Hasta después nos dice su novia Maggie. ¿A quién está esperando? Su novia Maggie, ella. Y ahora sí empieza a hablar solo de Maggie. Entonces, en este caso, podríamos también decir who is David who is... waiting for. Pero como queremos utilizar o no repetir el nombre de David, utilizamos en este caso he. un pronombre. Uh -huh. Who is David waiting he, for? Es la misma he, idea. He is waiting. Who is he waiting for? Mm -hmm. That's it. How about this part? ¿Cómo le salió esta parte? Parte número uno. Part number one. Why? Miren, necesitamos utilizar un auxiliar. Un auxiliar. Todos estos son auxiliares. Do Das or who. Y todos estos auxiliares los voy a utilizar con qué estructura? With the simple present tense. Todos son para formar oraciones with the simple present tense. Todas. ¿Cómo hago preguntas, oraciones con el simple present tense? ¿Cuál es la estructura? Aquí les va la estructura. Teacher, este, mm -hmm. lo puse así, pero me sigue dando error. No sé si yo lo estoy poniendo mal. He is waiting or who is waiting in the error. Look. Is he waiting? Is he is waiting? He, is he waiting? Okay. Mm -hmm. Vaya, vámonos a la de simple present tense. Si se fijan, simple present tense. Es para hablar de acciones rutinarias, cosas que hacemos... Yes. O repetimos siempre, yo voy al trabajo, yo me levanto a las seis. ¿Cómo? ¿Ok? Entonces, ¿cuál es la estructura? Sujeto, I. ¿Qué le sigue después del sujeto? Ya voy, ya voy. Miren, el verbo. Y un complemento. Subject, verb, complement. Esa es la estructura más fácil que tenemos. Sujeto, verbo y complemento. Lo único que tenemos que cuidar es cuando hablamos de la tercera persona. He, she, and it. Porque aquí el verbo con la tercera persona para afirmativo y para pregunta cambia. ¿Ok? Entonces veamos. Número uno. What do I need to do in number one? ¿Qué necesito hacer acá? ¿Una pregunta, una afirmación o una oración negativa? What do I need to do? Una pregunta. una pregunta. It's clear. This is a question that I need to do. ¿Y cómo hago la pregunta? Would you like? ¿Cuándo would you like? Mm -hmm. It's an invitation. Invitation. ¿Con qué hago una invitación? ¿Con qué expresión? Do, does, or would? Would. Exactly. Porque es una invitación. Would you like to see a movie tonight? Sure. What time does it start? Number two. ¿Qué necesito hacer? Pregunta, interrogación. Perdón, negativo o afirmativo. Y yeah. number two. It's another pregunta. question. Otra pregunta. Question. Una pregunta. Question. Entonces inicio con un auxiliar. Do. And if you see. 
Este Dice. es un tipo de pregunta que solo podemos responder con un sí y con un no. Uh -huh. Entonces, el auxiliar que ocupo para sí y no es do or does. No hay otra opción. Y como mi sujeto no es he, she, and it, será este el correcto. En number three, I need to make another question. En la tres también es pregunta, pero miren, es una pregunta abierta. Yo no tengo la respuesta. Entonces, para ese caso, ¿qué voy a ocupar? Un auxiliar también. Necesito un auxiliar porque cada pregunta lleva un auxiliar. What Does. kind of music? Does. Uh -huh. Muy bien. Identifico de quién estoy hablando, de Ricardo. Como es una tercera persona, la conjugación va a ser diferente. Das. ¿Y por qué lo pongo en minúscula? Porque está en medio de la oración. No puedo ponerlo con mayúscula inicial. What kind of music does your friend Ricardo like? Rock and classical, I think. Y ahí estarían nuestras tres opciones de respuesta. Si se fijan, todo tiene como una base o una explicación clara. Would, to make invitations. Do, to ask you about your likes and dislikes. And number three, does, because we are talking about a third person. In this case, about Ricardo, he. And that's it. Great. ¿Qué otro nos hace falta complementar? ¿Qué otro ejercicio? Which other? Because remember, by tomorrow, we need to have section number five done. Section number five is going to be over tomorrow. As we finish the class, you need to have all of the exercises ready. Let's move on. You know, I'm going to present this information. That is not that difficult. It's very similar to a topic that we were covering in previous classes. Este es el último tema de la sección 5. Quantifiers. Quantifiers are expressions, are words. Son palabras, los quantifiers, that we are going to use to express measures. Para expresar cantidades. Palabras que ocupamos para expresar cantidades. And we have the examples here. All, nearly all, most, many, a lot of, some, not many, few, no one. La primera, ¿qué significa? All. 100%. Todo. Nearly all. Casi todo. Casi todo. Most. Es como todo, pero en una cantidad menor. No es el 100%, tal vez un 80%. Many. A lot of. Algunos es some. Y luego aún bajando la cantidad. Not many, no tantos, few. Algunos en no one, as a zero percent, ninguno, ninguno. Hay más quantifiers, pero estos son como los más utilizados en inglés. All, nearly all, most, many, a lot of, some, not many, few, and no one. And we have examples like this one. Like the first one. Y necesitamos utilizar un quantifier al inicio para expresar cantidades. Families have only one child. Families have only one child. Si hablamos de El Salvador, información de nuestro país, El Salvador's information. ¿Qué piensan? 
families have only one child. Las familias solo tienen un hijo. ¿Cuál sería la expresión perfecta para complementar esta idea? En El Salvador. In El Salvador. All families have only one child. No, right? Nearly all families have only one child. ¿O cuál sería el porcentaje que ustedes le asignarían? Familias tienen solo un hijo. ¿Cuál es el porcentaje? De no familia? one. No one? No one. Right. El 0% entonces. No one. Yes. No one. Yo creería que tal vez no nos vayamos al extremo, ninguna, porque hay algunas que si solo tienen un hijo. Tal vez, miren. No. Yes, not many. Not many. Not many families have only one child. They have two children, three, four, or even five kids at home. So, not many families have only one child. Number two. Families are smaller these days. Las familias son más pequeñas estos días. ¿Qué piensan ustedes? Hablando del Salvador. That's true. It's true. That's true, right? So Many. We can say, ah, okay. Podemos decir, many families are smaller these days. O podemos decir también, a lot of families are smaller these days. O, oh, some families are smaller these days. Cualquiera de las tres expresiones cuadra perfectamente. Many families are smaller these days. A lot of and some. Third example. ¿Qué piensan de la tercera? Couples have more than one child. Las parejas tienen más de un hijo. Couples have more than one child. ¿Será que todas las parejas tienen más de un hijo? Ninguna. Many. Casi todas. Which one? Many couples have more than one child. Okay, probably. Which other can we use? No. Okay, some couples have more than one child. Is there any other one that we can use? Or can we say, oh, couples have more than one child. What do you think? All couples have more than one child. No, right? Or how about this one? Nearly all. Nearly all couples have more than one child. Casi todas tienen más de un hijo. Nearly all couples have more than one child. In my opinion, I will use that one. Utsaria esa. And the last one. Gets married before the age of 18 in El Salvador. ¿Será que la gente se casa antes de los 18? O será que no se da tanto en El Salvador? What is the tendency in El Salvador? ¿Cuál será la tendencia en El Salvador? Not many. Not many, right? Not many people get married before the age of 18. Not many people. Or... I will say few, few people, few people, oops, it's not this one. Few people get married, gets married before the age of 18. So we can easily use not many, few, and even we can say no one. Because it's not like a tendency. It's no, 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 no tendency. Okay quantifiers in English. But this is just the introduction. Esta fue solo la introducción. Necesitamos cubrir este tema mañana. Y if you see, we didn't even have time to finish with the presentation, with the family presentations. So before we finish, I guess I have time just for two of you. 
vamos a tener solo a dos de los que me faltan para presentar la familia. Así damos por concluido ese tema y mañana podemos ya continuar. Eh, sin mostrar la picture. I just need to listen about your family, Janira. Tell me about your family. What can you tell me about your family? Janira. Mm -hmm. uh, sin la foto. Yeah, without the picture. Don't um, um, I have... No, no quiere la teacher. Uh, I have three children. Um, okay. And my daughter um, is, quiero ver, no sé. My daughter name, name is Fabiola. Okay. Um, her husband, Husband, uh, name Edwin. They are two. They are two song. Um, they name are Lia and Farid. Uh, my uh, I have two. No, I have uh, two. Como digo, dos, dos, dos hijos, pero varones. Solo, ¿cómo lo digo? Two boys. Two boys. Two, two boys. Uh, I have two boys. Kim, eh, um, Kim, sería. Their name. Uh, their, their name is Rino Piero. And the other son is eh, Rodrigo. Ok. Eh, Rino Piero has the partner. Así sería. He has eh, a partner, ok, yes. Ajá, para, eh, Sandy, eh, they are one son. Eh, ¿Cómo digo llamado? They have one son, his name or her name. His name, Luca. Ah, his name is Luca. Ajá. Um, and Rodrigo is soltero. He is single. Single. Mm -hmm. uh, only. <laughs> and that's it. Very good, Janira. If you see, now you can express about your family. There we go. Excellent. Very good job. Thank you. You're welcome. So if you see, how to, do we express correctly about family? Ese es un tema que le van a consultar mucho. Así que practiquemos más. Okay, but that's okay, Janina. The last one. Let me have the last one for today. Who's ready to present? Go, please. <laughs> Ay, ok. Me dijo. Ay, Java. Ah, que este. Mm. ¿Ya? Yes. Sí, me faltan. Rita, Rita, she wants to participate. No, Go Rita ya dijo ayer, ¿verdad, Rita? No. No, no. she's missing. Yo voy, Yanni. Ah, Rita. Ya, yeah, ok. Go. Teacher, how do you say? Al mal paso, darle prisa. <laughs> ok. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't know. No hay una traducción literal. But you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, we are family, small. Uh, only have four members. Um, my mother is housewife. Housewife. And my husband is a um, professor and the university and my daughter i have a only one my daughter only that <laughs> um she's uh studying and the veterinary uh, and the four years on the how do you say the cuarto año Fourth year of four years of the career. Mm -hmm. Career. career. Uh -huh. 
Uh, she is working the vet vet shop, mm -hmm. and and only that. And only that. You see, great information, no corrections. Very good job, Rita. You see, we can easily express about our family. She was mentioning. My family is a small. I have a small family. Very good point. Excellent. So yeah. tomorrow, who's missing? ¿Quién me falta para mañana? Samuel va a ser el primero. Mañana si no hay excusa. Samuel. Okay. Ruth, teacher. Ruth, exactly. Ruth, mañana también le toca. Okay. La idea es que todos participemos y que sepan usar el vocabulario que aprendimos. No. Ellenilson. No, really, Ellenilson. Yeah, right. También falta. Who else? <laughs> Glenda. No, yes. right. Yes. yes, right. Yo ayer pasé. No, if I go and check the video, you okay. didn't present. I am non orphanum. So yo soy huérfano. <laughs> And that's it. Y se acabó la presentación. Come yeah. on. <laughs> ya pasé ahorita. Okay. Questions for Samuel? Háganle pregunta para que hable más. Don't worry. Listen, mañana We vamos a enfocar. We have three children. Ay, el huérfano. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Samuel. He has many children. Many children. A lot of children, you know? Um, no, no, right? No children. Lo que sepa. <laughs> No. How no. do you say regalos? <laughs> no, no, no es cierto. No es cierto. <laughs> palabra. En Guatemala tiene. ¿Tú qué regadero? <laughs> you guys, right? Don't worry, Samuel. Mañana nos enfocamos en terminar las presentaciones, dar un poco más de ejemplos de los quantifiers y vamos a revisar toda la parte de el final exam para que podamos completarlo si hay dudas y podamos tener todos los ejercicios de la plataforma. Identifiquen si hay alguno que les hace falta para que mañana completemos y cerremos ya el módulo, bueno, no, la sección 5, ¿ok? So we are going to stop the class here. It was a really nice class and we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a great afternoon and see you tomorrow. See you Happy tomorrow and congratulations tomorrow. again. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, you know. I really enjoy being with enjoy you your rest of the day. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to enjoy it. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank Bye, you. teacher. Bye. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, teacher. Bye, bye. Ah, Samuel, solo por eso va a ser el primero mañana. Bye, teacher. Ah. Oh, yo ya pasé. No, tomorrow you're going to be the sí. first one. See you. I am orphan. Okay, see you.